we'll just have to um, continue it if we need to in more than one part here. I want you to take great hope today. Take great courage today. Because everything that the left or anyone else tries to say is over, <laughs> it's just started. Hallelujah. We are in the way of beginning. And the glory's coming. And that's going to be an awesome thing. And all of this is happening. And that's going to be an awesome thing. Revival has already started. Revival is not coming. Revival has begun. It's already started. The glory is what's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, the, the enemy through tyranny and all kinds of lockdowns, masks, and all kinds of trash tried to stop a revival. He couldn't stop it. And now he thinks he's going to stop the glory. He's got his head in a pipe and he's dreaming, you know, he's pipe dreaming. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want us to, I want us to go over to uh, uh, 1 Samuel. And I want to take a look at, at something here in 1 Samuel. Praise God. Man, this is trying to do something here. 1 Samuel, pulpit's on the move today. Amen. Is everybody with us today around the world? They're with us? You know, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. The, the, the partners that are with the 11th hour around the world, they're the most special precious and yet powerful spiritual army that I have I know anything about and I believe that that we have all been raised up together for such a time as this I really do you take courage I, I heard the name I think it's Eleanor or some something that sounds like that you take courage for God is with you it's going to help you. Hallelujah. Now, in 1 Samuel, we see something here. And, and, and I'll pick this up here. And, and let's say in verse 23. The Lord, uh, the Lord through the witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. He said, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord... He hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee. For thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king of Israel. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said un unto him, to Saul, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned. Saul talking. Yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel. And turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Now, I want you to, to, to know this. God is a God of prophecy. Every word he uses is something he saw inside himself. Everything God says was a picture inside him before he released it out of his mouth. He's a God of the prophetic. He's a God of prophecy. Now, watch this. When he, he releases out of his mouth... God speaks what he sees. Any, and, and like we said earlier, any way you look at it, America's standard is that eagle, you know. Now, 
So the nation is constantly in the face of Almighty God. I don't know if anybody's ever thought of that before, but I hadn't until the Lord told me. That it's, it's constantly, every time those creatures go around his throne, this nation's in his face. Every time it, go, every time it goes around. And this nation was destined to be part of the four phases of redemption. The lion, the calf, the man, the flying eagle. It's all, it's, it's destined to take the word of the lion who became the lamb who uh, as a man and rose again as a flying eagle so we are constantly in his face now why is that so important to everyone around the world well everybody knows around the world they call this nation the leader of the free world and i want to tell you something i'm going to give a bold prophecy right here the leader of the free world yes the nation okay yes but i'm going to tell you something nations where that's full of believers right now the nations that are full of believers and and the nations that's watching right now that all these revivals are breaking out under cover in these nations it may be look like you're under tyranny now but the lord is going to send a freedom to you it's going to be a freedom there's going to be a freedom and i keep hearing it like this it's like governments, they may not give up their tyrannical titles, and yet they may. Some will. But it's going to be an in vogue thing for them to support Christians. Hallelujah. Well, I know, I know. That's, that's, that's bold, Brother Robin. Absolutely. Now, watch this. The political realm is the place where angels and demonic forces meet to do warfare over prophecy. To defeat a prophetic word, the dark world, to them it would be the greatest thing the kingdom of darkness has ever done. To defeat a prophetic word from God. They will use anyone possible to do this with. Men... Man, mankind, was a prophecy inside God at one point. It was a prophecy inside God. Don't you remember the prophetic word uh, God gave in Genesis 1, 26 through 28? Uh, he, when he said, let us make man in our image, create man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God was seeing inside himself this man. Now, I want you to notice something, and I'm going to lay something heavy on you. And you know, and I know people say, oh, oh, brother, we don't, we don't need heavy. Well, I'm going to tell you something. We don't need this anymore, tiptoeing through water that don't go up over our uh, hair on the top of our toes. We don't need stuff like this. Oh, just walk, oh, oh, just walk through the, oh, God is just good. Just reference the water and keep moving. This is a mighty army. It's an army that was raised up in the end time to do battle with the kingdom of hell and the forces of darkness around the world. And we have to be fearless in the face of the enemy. We have to stand in the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Going forward with the written word of God, the prophetic word in our spirit, coming out of our mouth, sitting firmly on the foundation of the written word, going out, speaking and using the sword of the spirit and do battle with the kingdom of the damned hallelujah now and if nations align themselves with the kingdom of the damned then guess what they are i'll let you finish the sentence so man was a prophecy inside god god saw this man and he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and so forth and so on. Well, I want to tell you something. The creatures that are full of eyes within and without that circle the throne of God constantly and they search God. They search him for mysteries, hidden things. And notice this, they, whatever they see in the angelic world, whatever they can find from God in his holiness, 
It's automatically transmitted to all the other angels and all the other in the kingdom. That's why they're full of eyes within and without. They're, they're the leaders. They're the closest angelic beings to God's person that exists. So they're searching him, and they translate everything they see to the other angels around. And so they, 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 they do this. And notice there's four faces on these creatures. There's the ox, or the New Testament says a calf. So you have a lion, you have a calf, you have a man, and you have a flying eagle. But notice this. No angel ever said in the protest of Psalm 8. Yes, Psalm 8 was a protest an angel made in a courtroom in heaven. Because you know this because Hebrews 2 quotes Psalm 8 and said it was a certain angel who said this. But notice no angel ever said, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. And David picked it up in the, in the prophetic, him being a prophet. He didn't say, no angel ever said, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy authority in all the earth. Who set your glory above the heavens and then say something like this. What is an ox? They never said it. And then they never said, what is, a, what, what is a flying eagle? They never said it. They knew what an ox was. They knew what a flying eagle was. They never said, what is a lion? But they questioned one thing. He said, what is a man? We see this face. We don't even know what it is. And man became the mystery hidden in God. And man became... Something that God himself was going to take the form of. Man became God, was going to be God's family of God reproducing himself in the earth. So he would have a family that would, could respond to him and talk to him on his own level. And that he would have a family that him being the father would be the only thing higher than this family. And he could provide every need for them. And they said, what is this man? And that angel which I believe was Lucifer. He, there's only one angel would have earnestly protested over a man. And David picked up on the courtroom scene. He said, what is this man that you're mindful of him? That you've got him in your... Bring a spark of life into, their, into the wombs of everyone. They, what is this creature? You've never done this to an angel. I didn't know there was a spot open between me and you, God. I might have wanted the spot. He couldn't get over this man. But he didn't realize that this man was a mystery hidden in the glory. And that a man was going to be named as a king. And that's why he's the king of kings. And so man was going to be named a king. What does a king mean? How, what does that mean? Well, a kingdom is a king having a domain. But what else would it mean to you and I in this time? It would mean, my brother and sister, this. It would mean, the Bible says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But it is the honor of a king to search that matter out. So this, this man was going to be a, a king under God's kingdom. That, and a man who could enter the glory and search out the mysteries. And an angel couldn't do that. They draw back every time they see something. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And the greatest revelation an angel could understand was that he was, he is, and he is to come. Hallelujah. But a man can walk in the glory and lift up every little mystery and look at it and set it back down. And have the capacity in his spirit or her spirit to understand what they're looking at. Because man can live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God utters a prophetic picture and releases it in a word. And a man is one word behind God taking every one of those and putting them in his heart. An angel can't, don't have the capacity for that. They have to be told by the four creatures around what, what the mysteries they're seeing. Those eyes represent every eye of every angel in existence. Hallelujah. 
And those that are fallen can't even see that. Now, you know, when Jesus was on the cross and he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, everybody around said he calls for Elijah. They can't understand prophetic words. They just said whatever it sounded like. So man was a prophecy. Man was a prophetic word God gave in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Notice, and those four faces. Now, we've discussed that. Now, watch this. Now, the earth became upside down by God in Genesis 1, 26 through 28 from coming to pass. The enemy destroyed everything in the earth just to keep that from happening. You think about that. He saw that man was coming. He had found in the revelation because Lucifer was the archangel that would take, walk up and down in the stones of fire. He would take the word uh, that he would find in there, lift himself up to the center of the earth, begin to sing prophetically, and he would release the word and it would hit those metal crystalline plates go all the way around the earth and it would start establishing the environment of a man that was coming cities fruitful places everything was happening all for the home of God's family it filled he wants to be so he wants to be a man the closest he will ever come is the beast and when you see men rising up in tyranny, and you see men like Hitler and, and Mussolini, and, and you see a stalling, and all these people just rising up like that, trying to dominate the people around them, all you're seeing is Satan trying to become a man. That's all that's happening. He's trying to become a man. He wants to be a man because he understands the position of one. Eight, the eighth psalm tells you the position the man was created to live in. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. He says here, now, well, let me, let me get back to this. So the earth became upside down, released by God about the man, Genesis 1, 26 through 28, from coming to pass. The enemy destroyed everything to keep it from coming to pass. Now, what's that got to do with what the the scripture we read in 1 Samuel. When the prophet Samuel told King Saul that today the kingdom has been taken from you. That was a prophetic word. From that point on, Saul's kingdom had one purpose. That was to make that prophecy not come to pass. About David coming. Now, I want you to see this. In the next verse, people may not read the next verse. You know, I, I never, I just, and why? I, I don't know why. This in 1 Samuel 15. The, the next verse in 29 says this. He says, well, let's read 28. And Samuel said unto the Lord, I mean, said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day day and has given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou now notice this he gave he he said the lord has taken it from you rent it from you today this day samuel put a time on it said today it happened well it's obvious saul didn't set his crown down that day but it was taken from him that day but watch this because he didn't do it. Watch what happened. Just in case. I hope everybody's listening. Is everybody listening? You got your catchers out. You ready for this? Are you ready to hear this? Just in case someone questioned Samuel being a false prophet. Samuel said this. Watch what he said. Verse 29. And also... So that word also means that Samuel, this was an extension of the same prophetic word. Is it not? It's an extension of the same word that today the kingdom's been rent from you and given to a neighbor of thine who is better than you, is what he told him. And also 
<laughs> so this is, this is part of the same prophecy. He said, and also the strength of Israel. This means the victory. This is talking about, when he says the strength of Israel, he's talking about the victory of Israel. He's talking about the, the, the strength. He's talking about um, uh, winning, the victory. There's another word I'm looking for here that I wrote down. But anyway, he's talking about the victory of Israel. He said, and also the victory of Israel will not lie nor repent. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Just in case, Saul, you want to develop a petition. Just in case you want to try to tell me to repent for what I just said. The victory of Israel will not lie. Nor repent. Mm. Oh my goodness. What did that sound like? A sacred cow dying. Mm. Now, now listen to this. For he is not a man that he should repent. Now what is he saying here? He, and the word strength there means eternity. And victory. So in other words, he said the eternity and victory of Israel will not lie nor repent. In other words, this stands for eternity. This will never back up. It will never go away. This is eternal, he said. That your kingdom has been taken from you, rent from you today. Why is that? You ready for this? I want to show you something. Now, now, now this is why this will probably have to be in two parts. I hope everybody's shouting that's on the other end of all of this. I hope they're just shouting and just jumping up and down and, and all that because you are the warriors. You understand what I'm saying. Watch this. Because if you back up here, listen what he says. Verse 26, and Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king of Israel. Now at that point, Saul was rejected. He was rejected. There was no time on when he would leave office, but he was rejected because the word of the Lord was rejected. The first step of leaving your anointing and that presence is being rejected by God. Because you reject his word. The next thing is, is this. Samuel turns to walk off. Watch what he says here. Now, you got to see this. He turns to walk away. And when he turns to walk away, watch what he says. He said, and Saul said unto Samuel, I've sinned, for I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words. I have transgress the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice now therefore because of this I pray thee pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord Samuel said unto Saul I will not return with thee now he said pardon me listen to what he says he says pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord what does that mean Pardon my sin, he said. I did it because I was afraid of the people. I rejected the word of the Lord. I transgressed against it. I transgressed against your word. I did it all because I feared the people. He said, pardon this sin. In other words, restore me back to my position. Come with me to the Lord to restore me back to my position. This is very crucial. You must listen to this. And all the people that, that, that are going to take what I say today and start sticking it out there, you need to just let this sink into your ears. He said, pardon me. Restore me back to my position. Turn with me again to worship the Lord. Samuel said, I will not. I will not. Watch now. So he not only transgressed the word of the Lord, but he transgressed the word of the prophet. Oh, my God. 
What are we seeing? Authority. We are seeing authority in the mouth of God's prophets. God took that personally. He put the rejection of the word of the prophet on the same level with rejection of his word. Because the prophets are the servants of the Lord. Now watch, now we're headed there. We're going somewhere. Tell your neighbor, he's going somewhere. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee. You'll, I'm not coming back with you to restore your position. For you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. You're not going to be king. You're rejected from being king. But there was no time attached yet. Then he said this, And as Samuel turned about to go away, Saul laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and it rent. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from you this day. This day. And has given it to a neighbor of yours who's better than you. So not only was the word of the prophet raised up to be a revered equally to the word of the Lord. The Lord did that. Not the prophet. The Lord did it. He was speaking through Samuel. So it was his word. Samuel was his mouthpiece. So Samuel was living by every word that came out of God's mouth, and he was his mouthpiece. So watch this. But the time tag was attached to how he treated the prophet. It was attached to his kingdom the way he revered the prophet because the prophet was the mouthpiece of God. When he grabbed his, his covering, he grabbed his anointing, and he tore it. Samuel whirled around and said, the kingdom has been torn from you today. Today. At that point, Saul you know the position. Saul walked right into the position of now. He is in the fringe area of insanity. He does not know what to do. The Lord has rejected him. And now a time tag is attached to it. What should have happened? You want to see? Everybody with me, right? They're, they're there. Okay. You want to see what should have happened? Watch this. It is said, and starts in verse 29. And Samuel said, and also, in this same prophetic word, the strength of Israel, the victory of Israel, the eternity, the eternal victory, the eternity and the victory of Israel will not lie nor repent from this prophecy. For he is not a man that he should repent. You know what that word repent there means? It means he's not a man that he needs consolation or comforting over the word he just released. In other words, God didn't sit down and cry about it after it was released. When he released it, he didn't cry about it. And he said, you can't, you can't pull on his emotions enough to make it turn either. You tore the garment of the prophet. What do you see this administration doing right now? Turn around and give the so-called Palestinians. Turn around and give millions of dollars. Suddenly when that arrived, rockets begin to rain down on Israel. Now you think about that. said, but the eternity of the, and the strength and the victory of Israel will not lie nor repent. He's not sitting down crying over it. You are rejected and your kingdom is taken from you today. 
Then watch what happens. Verse 30. Now, are you ready? Here it is. What should have happened. It's very unusual. Because he said in verse 30, Then he, Saul, said, I have sinned. Watch this. Yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel, the nation. And turn again with me that I may worship the Lord thy God. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Now what's changed between the other verse where he wouldn't turn with him, and now he's doing it? It's the difference in what Saul said. The first time Saul was saying, restore me back my kingdom, and he said, I will not. You're rejected. Then he said this. He said, he's taken it from you. He's not a man that he should lie nor repent. He's given it to a neighbor better than you. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not going to sit down and feel remorse over what was just told you. You treated the prophet that way. You threw down the word of God that came through the prophet that way. And it's not the, just the prophet that's so, you know, he's, a prophet's not God, but a prophet is a mouthpiece of God. To tell you harvest of what's coming. And when he tore that prophet's mantle. When he tore it. He determined his own time and downfall that day. Watch this now. You got to see this. So Saul said in verse 30. I have sinned. Okay. I realize it. Honor me now. Honor me before the elders of my people. And before the nation. These are two different groups of people. The elders of my people. Honor me before my staff. And honor me before what I've been set on the throne and those around me that serve me. Honor me there. For I am, watch now. I repent. I have sinned. If you bring honor on me, Saul was saying, I will go ahead and bow and relent authority and give it to the next king. Oh, come on, y'all. Surely you see that. He said, I will, I will go ahead and you honor me before my staff, before my court, and before the nation. Honor me that Saul is going to do the right thing and I will bow down here and worship the Lord and we will transfer power to the neighbor. Who's better than me? So Samuel said, all right. That's why Samuel turned and went with him. Saul was supposed to have done that. But Saul was lying. Saul, he, he might have tried for a second thought about the honorable thing. Because he's talking honor now. Then he could have left office with honor. But no, no, he lied. And Samuel went back and he wept and cried and prayed over Saul. Because Samuel knew. But he gave Saul the opportunity to repent. And give an opportunity to do. For he is the second half in the fringe in the insanity of the second half. Of Saul's kingdom. His kingdom was taken from him that day. But he managed to hold the area. He's the area. That deals with. Don't know what to do. And so the Lord. Is giving him an, an opportunity. He gave him one not long ago. I don't know if it's there now or not. But how many of you remember. From this platform. This prophet proclaimed. Do the honorable thing. I didn't even know that verse like that then. But I heard the word of the Lord. It's not legitimate. I'm going to do the honorable thing and step aside. To do that would bring honor on you in front. It would have brought honor in front of your staff, your party, and before the nation. But that wasn't done. Instead, all the foot soldiers grabbed the prophet's coats. Newsweek. 
hurling in their teeth at prophets. Not just me, I'm talking about prophets. I'm by no means the only prophet. There's prophets of great magnitudes that represent abominations before the Lord. The LGBTQ, whatever they call themselves, plus whatever they add of prophets. And you've determined your time of falling. The time of the prophets try men's souls to see where they are. And however you treat the mouth of God, it determines your future. So Saul turned back and Samuel wept and cried over him. He cried, he wept, he left that night. He went no more again to see Saul, no more. And he went back and it wasn't Saul that ridded the world of the Amalekites. Now this is a code, I'm talking in code and, and I've, I, I'm not released, the Lord said say it in code. I'm going to say this again, you search it out. You're a king, you can find it. Amalekite. Amalekite. It wasn't Saul that got rid of the Amalekites. It was Samuel. Samuel brought Agag out. Samuel took a sword. The word. The word. I'm talking now in the spirit. It was the prophet that took the word and cut the head off of the Amalekite, Agag. When he did, I imagine he dropped the, the head and all right there. Maybe he took Saul's sword and did it. He said, you should have done this. And he walked off. Never went to see Saul again. The Bible said he never went to see him again. That's why you know when the witch of Endor didn't conjure up Samuel. Because he never went to see him again. Then Samuel, he said, Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Gilgal, the home of the prophets. He said he did it before the Lord. Then Samuel went to Ramah. Arama. Imagine, listen to the words. He went to uh, Rama words. He went there. And Saul went up to his house and Gib uh, uh, went up to his house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. He didn't repent. It didn't make him sigh over the prophetic word. But Samuel's crying, Samuel's weeping, and the Lord is moved to his prophet. Trying to console Samuel. Because he's easily touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And he said, how long have you, are you going to weep over Saul? He said, I've rejected him. Seeing I've rejected him. So we see here that the only chance that he had to repent, he blew it. And he became a kingdom to do nothing, to do nothing at all, but to stop the prophecy of the better man coming. And that's what this administration's done, had every opportunity. And now they're treating the prophets with such disdain and contempt. They've tore their robes. They've ripped their, they've ripped their garment as the prophets turned their back on wickedness and walked away and pronounced the word and said, that's it. The victory and the eternity of Israel. The victory and the eternity of of the nation created because God loved them. And yet now we're grafted in. And the nation too. That was created because we love God. It's all the same principles. It said the victory. The eternity. Of the, of the God who does this will not lie. Nor repent over this. 
Brother Robin, you're going to give another word? You're going to give another word? I stand by the word I've given. Makes no difference what you see, what you feel, what you hear. This is true. All the way down to the opportunity to repent and bring honor upon his house. And this was rejected also. Now, Saul's second part of his kingdom after that pronouncement chased David round and round and round and round and round and round and and he couldn't hear the prophets anymore. So he went in to listen to witches. Listening to people who manipulate. People who plan and manipulate. Listening to witches. But the witch conjured up a spirit and the scripture said these gods whoa gods started coming up out of the ground that's what it says you go study it it said that she said I see gods coming up out of the ground she said I see an old man with a mantle he said it's Samuel No, it wasn't. Samuel never came to see him again. It was a familiar spirit. And he said, today, he said, I haven't. And Saul started pleading, Samuel, Samuel, restore me. Help me restore. Because Saul just said, it's got to be Samuel. Never really says he saw the spirit. Said she described him. Some blare-eyed witch sitting there, r- rolling around, trying to mock a prophet. They're scared of prophets. When prophets point their fingers at witches, those snakes bow and move back fast. Samuel and that witch would have never been in the same room. You imagine that. And so he said, restore me, restore me back to my kingdom. Oh, restore me. He said, the Lord has rejected thee. What can I do to thee? That spirit said, said, tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. They were. It's a dangerous thing to tear the garment of a prophet. That's a dangerous thing, to mock the mouthpiece of God. It's very dangerous to do such a thing as that. Very dangerous. Once that happens, it leads to one thing. It leads to insanity. After insanity comes, it leads to a futile search to reach God. Because your mind won't think right any longer. And your mind can hold someone back from knowing who God is. And so this is where we are in time. Where are we at, Brother Ron? Where are we at? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? People want to know, you have any updates? You have any updates? I have one update. The update is the word of the Lord that has been spoken. Nothing added to it. The only thing I've heard different is they pushed it over the line. When they attacked Israel. And they put Israel and tried to join the ranks of Hitler. The ranks of all the others through the ages. Nero. The ranks of all those wicked demon possessed people. Who attempted men who attempted to erase Israel. And all of them. As John Wayne said are pushing up daisies. And Israel lives. Hallelujah. Israel lives. And Israel is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That was the word of the Lord, he said, to bring today on the 11th hour. Today is a day of breakthrough. Today is a day of great victory. For victory has been spoken. And I've talked in a lot of code today that spiritual-minded people will figure out. Hallelujah. 
But I will tell you something, whoever's watching, and I'm not talking about our partners, and I'm not talking about, they're the most dear people in the world to me. You are. The partners are the most precious people in the entire world to me. I'm talking about people who's joining in viewing with you right now. They Maybe not sitting with you, but they're viewing the program. People that don't have your good or mind or mine in their minds. You better watch taking hold of a prophet's robe. You better, you better, you better wish to God that your fingers had grabbed something else. You should have put your fingers over your own mouth before you ripped a prophet's robe. Because once you ripped a prophet's robe, a pronouncement comes from heaven and says, Today, all your domain is rent from your hands. You remember this. And you call to the Lord and ask him to show honor on you again by you worshiping him. Because it's not me. It's the anointing he placed on me. It's not these other prophets. It's the anointing he placed on the other prophets. It's not just us. It's because we live by every word that comes out of his mouth. And we become a mouthpiece. You better watch it. You better watch it. If you're plotting a prophet's downfall, you have dug a pit that you will fall in. If you are plotting a prophet's downfall, you've rolled a stone that will roll back over you again. If you're plotting that, you remember something. You're in the fringes of insanity. And everything you know will be rent from your hands. Wake up and hear it. For it has come. It has approached the time. And people's I know people, some people think, Brother Robin, he's too wild. He's too wild. He, he's like Elijah. No, I live maybe so like him. Yes, but I live in the time of Elisha. And what would have come single in Elijah's day will now come double in the days of Elisha. I'm talking to those who have attempted to tear the prophet's robes off. God, you're in a dangerous place. And you don't even see it. But yet the same people will read horoscopes and believe that trash. They will, read, they will listen to soothsayers, psychics, and believe that garbage. And yet everything the Bible says makes science bow their heads in shame at some point in time. Everything science has tried to prove the Bible wrong have had to back up and lay down and apologize because the Bible ends up true every time. Everything, everything that's been said in this word is true and will come to pass. And the arrogance of such political opponents who think you have the mouth big enough to oppose God. This book will be here when you're not. Hallelujah. Who was it? Voltaire said in his day he would wipe the Bible off the face of the earth. It would not be remembered and his house was bought by a Bible society and filled with Bibles from the basement to the attic. Shipping them all over the world. Don't mock the living God. And he said, do my prophets no harm. Hallelujah. How we bless the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for wisdom and, and honor that you have placed on your word and anyone who will spend time in it can be a partaker of such honor. There is no one, Lord, but you. You are God. There is no God but you. Lord, I bow my knees to you because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
You are the living, almighty God. Lord God, this nation and the world, and I'm talking about your people, and precious, precious Israel is calling out for your mighty hand to stretch itself over the nations. Lord, grant it to your people today. Grant it to your people that they rejoice in the fulfillment of your prophecies. And that freedom and liberty is granted even through the political world even if you have to replace the kings and leaders that your word and your people can have revival and freely and walk in the glory and lord god that this earth can have a chance to repent the people in it can see your people shine like the mount of transfiguration until they fall on their faces and say, My God, the glory is on them, in them, shining through them. And Lord God, that the earth will look upon us in the glory and have opportunity to repent and serve you. Hallelujah. I ask you, Lord, to grant this in the time of the prophets. And we bow to you, Lord, and give you praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord Jesus, King of glory, you are the King, the only wise God. You're the only one through whom salvation comes. It's not Buddha. It's not Mohammed. It's not any other false God or nor any other idea of God. It is one, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, resurrection. It's your conquest in hell. It's you that rose again after three days and nights. And it's you who is seated by the right hand of God the Father making intercession or sacrifice that men may be saved. And I thank you Lord and I acknowledge to the entire world that Jesus is Lord and there is no other. I acknowledge to the entire world He's the only Lord of salvation that has ever been or ever will be. I acknowledge before the entire world that the only God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory. And I acknowledge before the entire world that everyone may hear that the Holy Ghost the precious, mighty Spirit of God that sat down on the apostles in the, one, the 120 in the upper room that day is the same Holy Ghost that brooded over the creation in Genesis. It's the same one and is the only Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And it is that Spirit that gave Joseph his wisdom. It is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that gave Daniel his insight. It is the Holy Ghost that moved upon King David and he danced and he danced for over 30 miles. It is the same Holy Ghost who calculated the moisture of the whole creation in his hands and meted out the heavens with his span. It's the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the Lord. And we acknowledge that. And it is He who lives within us. It is He who comes upon us for service. And it is He who gives us the language that only God can understand. And so we bless you before your throne, Almighty King in the language of the Spirit, 
Ito ka suke, leoristu porodu gunzelekar. Let all angels bow their heads and back up and make room for the family of God to come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, we are taking our positions as you have called us to do so that we may approach you boldly and make our request known to you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Now, that has... That has fulfilled the, the teaching of this day on this broadcast. That should be it. Until the next time we open the word, which will be soon. But I want everybody to partake of what they heard today. Even if you have to listen to it over and over. Even now, enemies of the cross have watched. Even now, some enemies of the cross, I think, are repenting. Even now. Hallelujah. So let's bring our prayer request out and let's pray. For I don't think any more words should be added to this today. I really don't. You know, I heard that in my spirit. Don't, don't add anything else to this. The Lord wants this marinated. He wants this to be meditated on. You know. Hallelujah. If this, if this has carried to the prophets, and a lot of prophets have come to the place where you heard this today and it encouraged you, take it, share it around. Let them hear. Let people hear. I'm talking about the prophets and God's people. Hallelujah. It's not permission for just everybody to just take it and do what they want. But it is a word to God's people, and especially in the prophets. Hallelujah. So we have prayer requests today. First of all, do we have any praise reports today? I want to hear some praise reports. So who's got them? Who's got them? I thought I would go ahead and, and just read this because someone put it on chat today. Um, she said, my unborn granddaughter and my son-in-law were baptized this Sunday. And my 21-year-old daughter was once lost, but now is found through power of prayer. So her whole family Hallelujah. came in. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Amen. Do we have another praise report? Okay. A couple that have come in. Um, one, uh, I, I was speaking to a lady this past weekend, and, and she uh, gave me permission to share this. Her husband, uh, since they have become a partner with this ministry, her husband works works a job in the restaurant industry, and where he works, there's never any there's never any raises given. There's never any room for promotion, anything like that. And and since they became a partner, they started partaking of the anointing that was on this ministry, and so he started calling for that. And out of the blue, he gets a call, and and I may be paraphrasing some of this, but he gets a call from his job that says, "We just want to give you a raise. We just we just want to give you a raise." And now he has. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's to a place in, in a, a position where he can actually start making decisions that affect the, the whole area. So he's been raised to a, a, a position of influence. And so that, that was from being a partner here. And then also we had a praise report sent through the prayer chat um, that said they had sent in a prayer. It was in an urgent prayer request. And then they sent back a praise report that said she is up in the bed eating. So praise God. And that is after our prayer ministers. The reason why I have the computers, our prayer ministers have printed out all the stuff that have came through and they've already laid hands on it and prayed for it. So these are just what have come in just here recently. And um, and and so, yeah. That. Now, Robin, you you take the mic and whatever the Lord tells you, just just 
you want to run, run. Whatever you want to do. Just <laughs> I'm known for that. Yeah. You know, there was another praise report came in, and it was someone who uh, chatted in and said, because I have been listening to the teaching on the offering on Sunday and, and giving, <laughs> that I am now debt-free. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Debt-free. We rejoice with you. You know, I said this uh, uh, a while back. I said, there's a club, and it's called the Oh No Man Nothing But To Love Him Club. And it is a good, now they are in that club. You owe no man but to love him. Hallelujah. That's a good club to be in. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Father God, there is no distance in prayer. And Lord, whether it be by computer or it be on a piece of paper, whether it be on a phone, where whatever, Lord, the the uh, the means be, right now we lay our hands as a point of contact on this computer and we Petition heaven this day. We stand in the courtroom of heaven with these prayer requests. Lord, each one represents a precious life. And Lord, we pray for the needs of the people. We pray the word, the word, the word. There's nothing like the word of the living God. Nothing can stand against the word of the living God. And the word says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed and made whole. Oh, the word says that you don't have to be poor anymore. That he was made poor so you could be made rich. And Lord, we stand, Father, in the gap for these precious people today. Their needs, Lord, their financial needs. Lord, some don't even know how they're going to eat. Oh, but Lord, you said we would eat in plenty. You know, I got to tell this other night, I keep a journal and I, I write grateful, I write what I'm grateful for. And the other night, I was sitting on the uh, in my bed and I just began to write and I said Lord I'm so grateful that I can go in a grocery store and I don't have to worry about putting anything back anymore and I can buy the groceries I want and you say well have you ever been where you could oh yeah oh yes and it just wasn't that, that long ago. And somewhere, because I wouldn't let go of a word of a prophet that said in, in 2020, there's going to be an open door. There's going to be an open door. It didn't say, it said there'd be a new, an open, new open door. And it was Brother Jerry Savelle, because he's a prophet. He's a seer. And I held on to that. And I would write that, I, I write all the words on a, um, on a blackboard of all the, the prophetic words that I hear from, from the, the prophets that I listen to. And that was one of them. And I begin to, to write, I have Brother Copeland's, I have Brother Jerry's, I have Brother Jesse's. And, and I wrote down, I have, I have the, the prophet of this house. And, and I had all the words written down, and I would go out the door. And, and it was the, the year of the open door, a new door. And he said, don't look at all the, the ways the, that the Lord would bless through another door. It's a new door. And, and I kept my eyes, my, my spiritual eyes open for the new door. And then one day it opened. Because I refuse to let go. If you believe the prophets, you will prosper. And I refuse to let go when it looked like everything had shut down and there was no way that anything could happen. That 
door. I'm telling you right now, I, I envision it as a big angel just took his foot and busted that door open. And when it did, the floodgates opened. And now we stepped over out of living in a land of just enough. Man, we was living in a land of not enough. We hadn't even got over into the land of just enough. We'd, bear, we'd get over into it, and then we'd get knocked back out into the land of, of not enough. But, oh, my goodness, we stepped over one day into the land of more than enough. And I'm not ashamed of prosperity. I'm not ashamed to say that God has been good to me. God has been good to this ministry. God has blessed us. And he continues to bless us. And the same one that I sat there and wrote down my gratitudes is the same God that will bless you. You never get to where you're not grateful. You will you be so grateful for the things that God has done for you. Hallelujah. Because your, your attitude of gratitude will bring you into the land of more than enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. So today I pray over the ones that are watching, the ones who have written in that need a financial miracle in their life. You stay on the word. Don't let go because a fact may be that your bank account has a zero balance or a negative balance. It may be that your job is not where you want to be. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, not you can, it's not the truth. The Word of God is the truth, and you can take this Word, the truth, and you can change any fact. And you hang on to that. Never depart from the Word. Glory to God, for it is the Word that will carry you through to victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declare today. Today's my day of breakthrough. Today's my day of breakthrough. And that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Hallelujah. I will not be pulled off of the word of the Lord. I believe the prophets. And so I prosper. Hallelujah. I, I, you know, and through that open door, think about this. This came to me when you said that. Through that open door came all of you. The greatest wealth is to have you as a family. That's just the most precious thing to me. And through that open door came all of you. And we will not cease to pray for you. I was praying over you last night. I'll be praying over you today. We're so grateful you're here. And I wanted, the Lord said, hand Robin the mic last there so you'd have all the time you wanted to say anything he wanted you to say. That's why I did it the way I did. Because they needed to hear that. We needed to hear what you just said. That was anointed. Couldn't you tell that was anointed? And it brought people from the land of not enough to just jump the land of just enough and land in the land of more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you have something else? You... Okay, do we have any prophetic words? Any words you hear in your spirit? When you were preaching, when you would move, move your hands, yeah. I seen the glory move with your hands. And out of your mouth, I seen smoke come out of it, the glory come out of your the mouth. Glory. What else yeah. Would it be? yeah, and the, and I just want to pray that it comes to people's homes. And even when they leave their homes and go somewhere, that it that it follows them. And peace, wherever they go, awesome. peace enters the room and the whole atmosphere changes. Because you can have whatever's here. Whatever's here, you can have it. And uh, I just pray right now that that... And another thing, I've never seen a demon dancing in the glory. 
Have you ever seen a demon dancing in the glory? I've never heard of it in my life. No. I've never heard of it. No. He can't stand in the glory. No, he cowers from he, that's, that's right. And I just release the glory into your homes today, Lord. And everywhere they go, Lord, that this follows them, Lord. And when they enter the place, the whole atmosphere changes, yes. Lord. And peace, even at their jobs, Lord. No more, no more devils, Lord, because the glory is with them, Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray that this affects their whole family, Lord. You're, you're a God of family and covenant, yes. Lord. And that this glory changes their family, Lord. And it changes everything in their life in Jesus' name. Powerful, powerful word. My God. Do you have something, Roxanne? Um, someone had chatted in, and sometimes I see them, and they just, I know it's something that needs to be prayed for. Um, uh, someone had run in and said, I'm Zimbabwean, and he said, please pray for the people in Zimbabwe because they're suffering. So Zim Zimbabwe, just it just came all over me. We need to lift these people up, especially the really mistreated in this country. Zimbabwe years ago you'll remember this wasn't it Zimbabwe when the Lord took me there in the spirit and I could see the dust as it rise and fell on us and and he, he said something about Zimbabwe you know that's when Africa got in my heart so and Africa is a, a precious place to the Lord that whole continent and I'm going to tell you something it's time for this to end pray Roxanne you have Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we petition you for this country, Lord, for this, this landlocked area, Lord. And we speak the word of the Lord that everything that is spoken in darkness there would be heard in the light. All of these backdoor closet deals the government of Zimbabwe, you have been found out now. These evil things have been heard in the spirit today. And breakthrough is coming for this country. And Lord, right now, I pray protection over that in the night when these evil devils come in to steal the ear and they would begin to devour these devils that would come against these people. No more loss of life in Jesus' name under the cover of darkness. For the light, the light of God has shone over this country today in Zimbabwe. And change is coming. I can hear it like wind. Wind blowing through the grass in this place great change is coming for you hold fast says the lord hold fast for deliverance is coming in jesus name lord we thank you thank you lord hallelujah you, know, you said did you say it was landlocked really it's a landlocked country you know right now i pray that a way of escape would be made because I heard when you said that the enemy thinks he has the people Israel were trapped against the Red Sea, against uh, uh, um, uh, the wilderness that was in front of them. The Red Sea was here, the wilderness there, the Pharaoh and his army was there. There was nowhere to go. They were between the watchtower, you know, and, and the sea and so forth. And so there was nowhere to go. So God just split the sea. Through a prophet. So this is a prophetic ministry. So we send a dividing path. We call for a path to be put over in, in, in Zimbabwe. That it will open up and give God's people an opportunity to escape tyranny. And escape the plots and plans of that government. In Jesus name. Tommy do you have something? Nothing today? A key in the spirit to unlock the land today. There was a key. There was a key sent in the spirit to unlock the land. Hallelujah! Somebody ought to shout over that. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Krista, just take your liberty when you're through. You just receive the offering. As I was going through the prayer requests and and looking at different ones, I noticed something, and the Lord gave the. The Lord gave me a, an unction in the Spirit Sunday during the prayer uh, service that was go going through the prayer request today, 
requests after requests after requests just came coming up about dealing with suicide and dealing with suicide suicidal thoughts and 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 these different things that try to plague their minds and everyone hates me because I'm standing but nobody else believes the same thing I do and so I mean re request after request and it just rose up in me today I'm going to pray over this today over you because uh, and I kept hearing as I, w I was sitting up there going through it, and, and it may sound funny to some, but I'm going to tell you something. It was so powerful, and, and you know, um, there was a, a song back in the early 90s by Carmen called Satan Bite the Dust, and he said, he said, I represent a whole new breed of Christian of today, and I'm authorized and deputized to blow you clean away, and so today, I've got a message to deliver and I'm authorized and deputized to blow you clean away the voices that are speaking in your head I know you I know what you sound like I know the lies that you spread in people's head and you know me and today I take my authority and my badge to blow you away out of our partners minds because just like in that song I'm tired of you and my family and I'm tired of you and my church you are my family all of you partners I'm tired of you in my church the body of Christ I'm tired of you plaguing their minds and their souls to where they can't function and do their call and do the things that God has set before them to do today I decree and declare that you are free of these voices and I cut them off and I command you spirit of hell you spirit of torment to shut your ugly stinking mouth today against my family against my friends no more will they be plagued by this today and from this day forward they will see you and hear you no more forever in Jesus name you are free today you just start saying now every time you start to hear those voices come up in your head because that's where it is it's not in your spirit it's in your mind it's all in your head the enemy attacks he can't get in here he's up here speaking and all he's doing is lying you begin if you're filled with the holy ghost if you're if you're filled with the spirit to be able to pray in tongues you just immediately you take those thoughts into captivity you say i'll buy it and start praying in the spirit why because you're not speaking out of your head you're speaking out of your your spirit and he can't understand what you're saying because it's a language between you and god and so uh, from this day forward I believe that our partners in this ministry, in my 11th hour family, you are free today. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. You know, you know before we close today, Tommy, come here just a minute. I, I heard this, and, I, and before Krista carries us to the end of the service here, I want you to speak a blessing. I want you to speak a blessing over musicians. Over musicians. Yeah, because there's a lot of prophetic musicians out there. And, and, and they, need a, they need to hear the blessing of the Lord. Just bless them in the name of Jesus that they come forth with their talent. Amen. Amen. Well, there's one thing for sure I know that God gives us talents. Yes. I've told you all, I played, the, I played the bass guitar without ever learning. That's the truth. I did not learn to play the bass guitar. God gave me that gift. Yes, I picked it up. The first time I ever seen a bass guitar, I picked it up and played it. I don't know. I thought I told y'all. You told me. I, th I thought I had. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If you want to do something for God in musically, <coughs> I didn't ask for the blessing. I didn't ask for that gift. But he gave it to me regardless. But if you want to do something for God, you ask him. Without faith, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So through faith, you pick your instrument and you ask God to show you how to play that instrument. And then you go play it. You don't go to the bars and play it. You go to God's house and play it. I've never played, I've never played a secular song anywhere. 
I've always played in God's house since I was young. And I'll tell you another thing, too, while I'm talking. <laughs> but when I used to go to church, where we talk about all the time, my great-grandfather uh, had the ministry, and my granddaddy built the church, and that's where I attended church, and that's where Sister Robin would go, and he'd put her up on a stool and let her sing. But in that church, I was only his drum, and I could keep tune at a real, as a, as a young Lord God has already put it on me. Come on me. That's, I never even thought of that. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus. And I just said that it's, without faith it's impossible to please Him. So if you want to be pleasing to God today, then you ask the Lord God to give you whatever gift it is you want to play, whatever instrument. You ask Him in faith, believing. And I'm going to tell you, He will do that. I, I'm living proof that He will do that. And in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The mighty name of Jesus. I speak that blessing on you right now. With what's in me, the anointing that's on me, I, I speak a blessing on you. I speak a blessing on everybody out there. Everybody that's listening. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're doing a good thing. And those out there that maybe they're, they're undecided or whatever, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Accept Him as your Savior. And then expect mighty things because He's a mighty God and He only does mighty things. Amen. Oh, that's awesome. He's a mighty God who only does mighty things. <laughs> Praise God. So everything he does, no matter how little you think it is, is mighty. Hallelujah. Come on, Krista, and you, and you take the mic here. and uh, just what, yeah. Amen. Well, we're going to get ready to receive our offering today. Uh, wow, that, that, was, that was powerful. I, I received that myself. Praise God. Well, as this altar today ha has, has been prepared, this has been, this has been laid out for you now to sow into what you've heard today and to sow into the revelation. So if you want to give today, we never want to close any broadcast, any service without giving you the opportunity to give because... I, when I come into a service, when I come into a meeting, it, it doesn't matter where I am. I can't wait for the offering time. I, I get so excited because I know that I'm sowing in to God's kingdom and whatever ministry that that is, whether I'm going to, to see a, a different speaker or something, I know that I just gave in to that. And so wherever that they go and whoever's life that they touch, that it, it's accredited to me that I gave in to that. And so I look forward to the offering every single time. So I, I want to give you the opportunity to give today. So we have different ways to give up on the screen today. You can go to the website www.robindbullock.com. There is a, if you're watching by, by that website, there's a blue button at the bottom of the screen that says give. You can click that. Or if you're watching by YouTube, the link is in the description. And also we have text to give. So you can look at that number on the screen today. And also if you're mailing I, and that is short for Youth Force Ministries Church International. And so we, we just want to make all those uh, available options for you today. But as you're giving, you know why, you need to know why you give. And so uh, I want to encourage you. See, the, the scripture says that my people perish from a lack of knowledge. And so we, if you're just bucket plunking, as they used to say, different things like that, and you're just throwing money here and you're just throwing money there, but with no knowledge of why you do what you do, then what does it benefit you but just to feel like you've just thrown it away? But when you possess the knowledge, see, Jacob in the scripture, when he fell asleep and he saw the, the ladder, and some of you have, have watched that on the Elijah stream be explained, and he saw the angels going up and down, getting harvest, bringing harvest. And when he woke up, he said, 
the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. He said, but if this is the way this works, I'll give a tenth of everything I own. I'll give a tenth of everything because he knew this is how I get my harvest. This is how that I can sow into this, and they'll take it up, they'll get it, and they'll bring it back down. He said, how did I not know this? Uh, but now that I do, now that I possess this knowledge, I, I'll, I'll sow a tenth of everything I have. Take it. Take it. I want to sow it. That, that's my language. But here, take it because I know how to reap now. I know how to get my blessing. I know how to get what I've been believing for. So today, when you sow, know why you sow. Because when, when you know something and that pertains to anything, nobody can take that away from you. The enemy can't take it away from you. It's like if you know two plus two is four, you, no one can take that away from you. You know it forever. You know that two plus two is four. You know that when you give, God said it was coming back to you, and it shall be done. He said that in the Word. So today I'm going to speak that scripture over you today over your offering. Luke 6 and 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you that tithe to this ministry... I want to speak your tithing promise, and you need to know why you tithe, because you can, you can access the benefits of the tither when you know why you tithe. And so, and the enemy can't take that away from you, and he's scared of you, he's scared of the tither, because it's the only place in the scripture that the Lord says, I will rebuke the devourer. Because when he comes up that ladder to try and get a harvest for you that don't belong to you, the Lord says, uh-uh go you can't you can't have this and so your tithers that you can't touch them you can't destroy what they have and so this is why you tithe and we're going to speak our promise malachi 3 10 it'll be on the screen i want you to say it with me it says bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith saith the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and put Pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time in the field. Saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen, so be it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Krista. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the 11th hour. It's been a powerful day, don't you think? I mean... I mean, how many on the pr uh, platform here know that the power's been here today? Everybody in the room.